This is the Tappan Zee Bridge by Seth Law. The official name of the Tappan Zee Bridge is the Governor Malcolm Wilson Tappan Zee Bridge, named after Governor Malcolm Wilson, who was the governor overseeing construction of the bridge at its time in the 50s. The name Tappan Zee is also a word that pays cultural homage to the region's history. Tappan is the name of a local native tribe and the word Zee is the Dutch word for sea. This is in reference to the Dutch who were the first settlers of the Hudson River area. The Tappan Zee Bridge spans the cities of Terrytown and South Nyack, New York over the Hudson River just north of New York City. The Tappan Zee Bridge is a cantilever bridge with trusses along its top, as you can see to the right as seen from the city of Terrytown. The bridge began construction on March 12, 1952 and completed on December 14, 1955, meaning it took just over about three and a half years for the bridge to be built. The total length of the bridge is about 16,031 feet this makes it the longest spanning bridge in New York State. When the bridge was built, it had six lanes to accommodate traffic going in both directions, meaning it had three in the eastbound direction and three in the westbound direction. In 1950, when the project was first bid, it costed about $81 million, but after adjusting for inflation by 2014 standards, that comes out to about $796 million even more so today in 2021. After 62 years of service, the Tappan Zee Bridge was officially decommissioned and replaced by the Governor Mario M. Cuomo Bridge, as you can see in the photo to the right. Before construction of the Tappan Zee Bridge could commence, the engineers and designers faced a lot of significant challenges regarding the site of the bridge. The site of the bridge that was selected was ultimately one of the widest parts at about three miles wide along the 10 mile long river span. This site was specifically selected though because the state of New York did not want to share the toll fee with the state of New Jersey. So the state had to pick a site that was far enough north that it wouldn't cross into New Jersey, but still far enough south that it would make sense that the bridge be used for somebody who is commuting into and out of, say, New York City. It just so happens that the site was the widest part of the river. On top of that, for the bridge to be structurally sound, the bridge would have needed to be anchored into the bedrock, which was at a depth of at least 250 feet, if not greater. At certain points along the river, it was much deeper than that. This meant that the amount of steel required would have been so high that it would have farly exceeded the amount of financial reasonability to build the bridge in the first place. It wouldn't have been able to pay off. On top of that, a long tight arch was proposed to be on top of the bridge as well for aesthetic reasoning. But again, the amount of material just did not make sense. So they had to come up with solutions otherwise to be able to reduce the cost. After evaluating the financial situation as well as the engineering complications at hand, a workable solution was finally proposed by the engineer Emil H. Prager who suggested that they use the river's natural buoyancy to support the structure itself. What he meant was that they would create eight concrete airtight boxes which would float along the top of the river and take about 70 to 80 percent of the bridge's structural dead load. This meant that the remaining load could be transferred to the bedrock through the slender piles which would also anchor the concrete boxes. This time though these piles would only take about 20 to 30 percent of the remaining dead load, significantly decreasing the amount of steel and materials that would have been necessary and was driving up the price of the original design. Still, over 2 million linear feet of steel was used roughly within this design. And if that's only absorbing, say, 20 to 30% of the structural dead load, 
Imagine how high that amount would have been had it been taking all 100% of that bridge's load. On top of that, as I said before, the steel arch, which was also very expensive to design, was ultimately replaced with long cantilever trusses, which were structurally sound and again, reduced the amount of material necessary, therefore making the bridge economically feasible. Aside from the incredible feat of engineering that the Tappan Zee Bridge proved to be, significant impacts were also seen in both economic and social circumstances. Economically related, the bridge created plenty of jobs, jobs including construction work during its original design, maintenance related work for years to come after, and then toll work that would be necessary to operate the bridge. In fact, it was estimated that over 10,000 different workers worked on the bridge alone between the years 52 to 55. The bridge also boosted the development of the South Nyack and Terrytown areas due to its proximity to New York City. This meant that a lot more people were able to live in the suburbs if they wanted to work in the city. Roughly 500,000 square feet of industrial space was refurbished in South Nyack, and millions was spent on new residential development in Terrytown and its adjoining cities. This new housing led to increased social circumstances, including the fact that a lot more people meant a much higher population in an already increasingly high populated region. While the Tappan Zee Bridge was an incredible feat of engineering at, for its time, unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. As I said before, the bridge was in commission for about 62 years before it was finally replaced. Years of growing concerns over the structural integrity and the traffic demands of the bridge caused a lot of people to be worried about what would happen if the bridge was not ultimately retired. For instance, in the year 1955, roughly 18,000 vehicles per day would travel over the bridge. Compare that to 2010, when about 140,000 vehicles would travel over it per day. Not only does this mean that a lot more people were going, causing a lot more traffic, this meant that a lot more structural damage was happening to the bridge, and they could only keep up with repairing the structural damage so much. In 1987, the middle median was removed and to increase the number of lanes from six to seven. This was a shorthand solution for the increasing amount of traffic, but it still wasn't enough. In 1992, this lane was made movable to accommodate the traffic in either direction. So that way, whenever the rush hour was going, there would be four lanes instead of just three. Still, this wasn't enough, and ultimately, they had to come up with another solution to be able to accommodate for the increasing structural loads and the increasingly high amounts of population growth seen in this area. The years of concerns about the old Tappan Zee Bridge were finally put to rest when the new Governor Mario M. Cuomo Bridge was able to begin construction in October of 2013 and was finally opened in August of 2017 and September of 2018. The bridge was built directly next to the old Tappan Zee Bridge and was opened in sections to accommodate for the demolition of the old bridge. The northbound section was first opened on August 26, 2017, accommodating westbound traffic, while eastbound traffic continued to drive along the old Tappan Zee Bridge until about October of 2017, when all traffic was then moved to the north span of the new bridge. At this point, the old bridge was able to begin demolition, as shown below. Different parts of the bridge were salvaged and recycled, while other parts of the bridge were ultimately destroyed and not much left. Finally, the south span of the new Mario M. Cuomo Bridge was opened on September 11, 2018, allowing for all eastbound traffic to then move to its south span. 
the cost of the new bridge was roughly $3.9 billion, significantly higher than what the original bridge costed. This new bridge is a twin cable stay bridge featuring eight lanes, two bus lanes, and two bike lanes, all to accommodate the ever-increasing amount of traffic demands as we progress in today's society. Ultimately, the new Tappan Zee Governor Mario M. Cuomo Bridge is predicted to last over a hundred years. While the original bridge was an incredible feat of engineering for its time, the new bridge has utilized the most incredible advances in technology, engineering, and materials design, hopefully making it able to last for a very long time as necessary in our ever-growing demand in today's society.